Okay, next day, next video. So, again, just to recap, what I have to do is cut off this flange off of, uh, off of this part that we fabric, or these two parts that we fabricated. This is the door closing lip, if you will. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing that work on my Ryobi bandsaw. So, a while back, I I'm not sure, I'm not sure when it was, but I had talked about I need to buy a new bandsaw blade because over time, over you know, cutting a whole plane worth of aluminum, I basically wore that blade out. And it got it's to the point now where I'm basically melting my way through whatever I'm cutting. I'm not actually doing any cutting. Uh, well, <clears throat> I, I thought I had ordered the blade and I went online and I'm looking at Amazon like, why hasn't this blade arrived yet? And I guess I never clicked complete or whatever, so it didn't send, uh, you know, it never sent. So I have reordered it. And I, I went to the big box stores thinking, oh, surely, you know, be able to get there. No, you actually can't. It's a weird size, like 59 and a quarter inch or something like that. So couldn't find it at my local big box store. So I had to order another one online. And I came out here today to talk about it and work on it. And I left the blade at home. So a lot of you asked me if, if having a big hanger is, is advantageous. And the answer is yes, for space. No, because it's, you know, if you're working in your garage, it's real convenient just to run out, you know, run into the house and run out to the garage, you know, and you can do things quickly. Whereas out here, it's a 20 minute drive, at least, depending on traffic, for me to get back and forth. So <clears throat> I got to run home right quick and go get that blade. But once I'm done with that, then we're going to cut on the sucker. So <sighs> be right back. All right, three hours later, we have saw blade from Amazon. So, where's my, where's my sharp thing? Somewhere. Sometimes I can't find things. Let's try again. Where the fuck is my knife? Sometimes I swear people have been in here moving things. Okay, let's open this sucker up. And... See if we got the right blade. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. All right. Saw blade fifty-one. All right. So I'm gonna put this sucker on here, and I'm gonna work on cutting this part. So now let's turn this on. Woo win! All right. Sounds terrible. Is that right there? Where's my WD-40? Give it a squirt. Somewhere. I have some WD-40. All right. So what I need to do, like I said, is I got to cut this now. First of all, that blade, the new blade is way sharp. <laughs> I don't think I realized how dull my old blade was until I put the new blade on there and it just went zip right through something. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's what it's supposed to be like. Oops. <clears throat> uh, anyways, so I've got to cut, you know, along this line right here. And I've got, you can see I've kind of get little scribbles of, of the area that's going to be missing. I need to transfer this line to this side so that when I lay it flat on this, it will I have a, a line to, to cut across. As it is like this, that would be challenging. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer the line to the other side based on just measurements and then uh, go from there so I can cut this sucker. And then on to the next bit, which is probably assembly of some sign. So let me do that right quick. Let's see. Make this the easy way. I uh, can talk while I'm working here. I went to a call yesterday, day before yesterday, whenever the hell that was, and I ripped a muscle in my leg. Um, it really hurt. I was trying to rush to someone's aid. I don't want to go on too many details about the call, but needless to say, I was in a hurry. 
and I went up there to went up a hill it's a real steep hill that I was trying to you know boogie on up and I'll be damned if I did not I mean my something in my calf popped my right calf I've had that before I uh <clears throat> okay, so this one's this one. I'm, I'm going to be moving the marking. So what I did on this one is I literally just drew a little line on each side, and then I was able to put my ruler on there and draw the line. Uh, this one's not as convenient because my ruler's not that long. So I'm going to actually have to measure this one. But uh, I've had the same injury before when I was younger. Oh, yeah, 12. I remember that. And let me tell you, first of all, getting old sucks. Just throwing that out there. But, yeah, the the torn muscle in your calf, you can't do anything. Like when you're pushing off, like, you know, your foot sits like this, and then when you push off to step or whatever, that's when you use some of those muscles where it works. Well, my right leg can't do that. I have to walk very flat-footed right now. And uh, I don't like it. It hurts. But getting old, you know, that's... That's what that's about. I would like to not have these issues, but, you know, I guess the alternative is um, not as good. <laughs> Death, I guess. <laughs> I'd rather be alive. So, anyways, good times. Love, love what I do, but sometimes you just get hurt. That's just, that's all there is to it. Sounds like the carbon cubs up. We got a here, guy here. He's got an old. It's not a carbon cub. It's one of the old cubs, and uh, he flies it all the time. He just goes putt putting around the sky, which is awesome. All right, all right. Let me finish this. I'll get it cut, and then we'll revisit. I guess I got to draw this line. Well, that's perfect. And that blade is so sharp, you almost don't need to deburr it. Um, the first one I did without using a guide, and I mean, it's fine. It's not, it's not perfect. A little tiny, teeny, tiny bit wavy, but this is absolutely perfect. So let me uh, deburr this right quick. That's the better way to go, use a guide. They have a guide for this. It's a thing that you clamp on here. I think it's at the house. Or, I don't know where it is. I think it might be up in my wood shop. This used to be my old wood bandsaw. Now I have a gigantic bandsaw. For those wondering, I'm not pushing real hard up against the wheel. In fact, I'm, it's barely brushing against it. The idea is you want to make it so when you rub your fingers against it, there's no sharps at all. It feels smooth. That's all I'm doing. I got to get those skins off there. Remember I talked about you got to put stuff on and take stuff off. So now I've got to take that skin off and do this. So onward to that. Sweet. But first, a message from our sponsors. Just kidding, I don't have any sponsors. Um, <laughs> uh, so what I did at first, uh, instead of just rushing over and pulling all those, uh, the, the, the skin off, I put the ribs, or not the ribs, I guess the, the skeleton, if you will, that go under that on, thinking that it would be easier to uh, sort of have everything in the correct shape, because I know those, those two uprights are kind of at a weird angle, so I thought it'd be easier to have everything in shape uh, but held together by the skin, and, and then I realized as I was doing it that I can't use the skin because none of the holes are actually drilled in those angle aluminum pieces yet. So I ended up using a bunch of clamps <laughs> to hold the whole thing together. Uh, but once I got that done, then I jumped to the other side and started pulling all the skins, or well, the one skin off, that's actually a pretty big piece of skin, uh, in preparation to 
do the next bit, you know, put all, put all the holes where they needed to be. So with that, guys, I want to say thank you guys very much. Uh, if you enjoy what I'm doing on this channel, if you do me a favor and click that like and subscribe button down there, it really does help my numbers and it helps get the message out there and show people what I'm doing. If you guys want to share this to other your friends, that would help me also. Um, and if you really want to support me, you can jump over to my Patreon page. There's a link down below. Uh, just you know, submitting as, as little as a dollar a month actually helps me, lets me know you continue to enjoy this content. And of course, you can just think of it as, hey, you're buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. I love coffee, thank you much. Uh, and finally, and I say this every time, if you guys wanna build your own Vans aircraft, that doesn't have to be an RV-10, it can be anything uh, in the Vans lineup. If you use my builder number, again, down below, when you order your part, you can use me as a referral. Vans will send me a hundred bucks. It's no money out of your pocket. It's just a way to say thank you and encourage me to keep doing this. So anyways, back to it. Okay, so um, I did what I said I was going to do. I pulled that other skin off, and I have put all of the various uh, bits and bobs together here, and I've used various clamps and things to just kind of hold it together. A lot of the stuff is there's no, there's no holes for clicoing yet, so, um, you know, I'm using a clamp. But now I'm going through and I'm drilling, uh, up to number 30, all of the various match drilling, all the various holes and all these pieces. And yeah, kind of cool. Now I have questions regarding how some of this goes together. So this will be interesting like this. I thought that these went down this way, but actually it looks like they go, you know, up, which is cool that, that I don't know why I didn't think of that before. So this is the same stock as that. This will actually go here, which makes a hell of a lot more sense. Um, so that will go up here, I believe. These will butt into right about here, it looks like, but they don't go into here. So that's interesting. I wonder how that's gonna work. I guess these don't provide any support past this point. It's all up here. So. We'll see. I mean, I could be completely off base, but that's what it looks like so far. Um, other than that, though, it's just a matter of drilling all the stuff, and then I got to work on this skin. So I've got the other skin. I had to, I just took it off. Uh, it was you know curved just fine, but now I've got to do the same thing on this side to this other skin. And I have not done that yet, so that's one of the things I still need to do. But yeah, so this is. This is pretty easy so far. It's just a lot of assembling, putting together, drilling holes, and then disassembling and doing it again on the other side. But yeah, so now I need to keep drilling and then more drilling. <laughs> so right here, you're seeing me climb up and down on this painter's platform thing that I purchased. It's got this adjustable height between like 20 and 30 inches and and you can widen the feet and do all sorts of cool stuff. It's really very useful. Uh, I recommend it. It was about 200 bucks. I mean, they're not cheap, but when it comes to being by yourself and being able to get up and do stuff, it's great. Um, you'll also probably notice that I'm getting up and down. I don't know if it'll translate well, but it, I'm getting up and down really gingerly. Uh, it's because at about 45, somewhere between 45 and 50, your body's check engine light comes on uh, and just stays on, apparently. I ripped a muscle in my leg uh, the other day, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking it easy. I'm going kind of slow. Uh, don't do that, by the way. That hurts. <laughs> Anyways, that's what I'm doing here is I'm match drilling all the stuff, using that painter's uh, platform, and continuing to make progress on all the things. All right, so for this next part, this piece, which is the 1015CR, goes here. Move my clamp. And it just fits. It fits perfectly. <laughs> Even the, are the holes lined up? Are you kidding me? holes line up. <laughs> Look, I know I shouldn't be blown away when this happens, and it seems like it happens a lot, but 
it's just magical to me. I know computer-aided drafting, modern design, this is how stuff works, uh, and it's trivial, but for me, I guess I'm old school and stupid, but when I put two completely disparate parts, this part I just pulled the bluing off like I had never used before, and it all lines up. That's just magic. <laughs> well done, Vans. Um, this is really cool. So anyways, uh, next I'm gonna take this part. I've got to, uh, so there's screws right here, right? Yeah, there's nut plates here. So I'm gonna be doing some um, upsizing these to 19, I assume, and then machine countersinking them because of the thickness of this so that they can screw in to these various holes. So that's what I'm doing next. Okay, so um, I didn't do this on camera just to save you guys from having to watch or something really boring. Long story short, this piece that I just talked about a second ago that magically fits in here somehow, um, I went through and I had to prepare it by, you know, uh, machine countersinking all these screw holes that are along here. Uh, then, you know, first you drill it up to number 19, then you machine countersink it, and I always test fit with a bolt that goes through here to make sure, or screw to make sure it goes through here and fits. Then you go through and drill number 40, all of the holes that go through the, excuse me, lingeron or lingeron or however the hell you're supposed to say it. I keep getting people going back and forth. Uh, and these uprights right here. Uh, now, mystically, magically, all of the holes automatically lined up correctly from the earlier process, the earlier step. The only hole that hadn't been drilled was the very first one um, on both sides. And I looked to make sure I hadn't like, you know, slid this down or something. No, it was, that hole was just missing. So drilled that and now everything's good. This is getting pretty stout. Just, I mean, every time you add another piece, it seems like it gets more and more rigid. So, uh, awesome. So now uh, I'm gonna move on to the next step. And the next step is continuing to work on the cargo door area. Okay, so I can't see because I'm blind. Cut the baggage door shim into the A and B baggage door shim as shown deeper edges of both parts and then put it aside until attaching the Dale cone. Okay, so there's a single step on page 29-8 that basically says, hey, take these, these, this one part, cut it into two parts, clean everything, and then put it aside. <laughs> um, awesome. There's a lot of that, actually. There, there are several times in here when you're gonna be working on something, and it almost seems like it's out of place uh, in that you don't really do anything with it until later. But the reason they put it in the plans where they put it is because it's related to the part that you're actively working with. So it, it makes sense where it's at. And that's what this is. So this is two shims that I'm going to, well, one shim that I'm gonna cut into two shims and then clean up the parts. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And then go on to the next step, which is uh, more drilling. So many holes. Okay, here we go. All right, so in this step, I've already uh, worked on the baggage door shim, put them aside. In this step, I need to mark down what this is so I don't forget. This is the F1023L. So these are um, flanges that go on the skin. Um, so this one goes basically right about here, I guess right here on the skin. Does it go down, maybe down to here? I'm not sure. It goes somewhere over here. Um, and you've got this upper part of the, this flange and then there's this part of the flange that's part of the skin. So this will, this will butt up against the skin. So that means we know immediately, since this is going directly in contact with the skin, that we will eventually have to not only final drill these, but also dimple these. What this step is telling me to do right now, though, is to final drill and dimple the ones that are on top, that are not touching the skin. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now to both of these parts. This one goes over here. So we're working on these guys. So this is more of the skeletal structure of the plane. Uh, bluing. Good times. I say good times a lot. I should stop that. 
it's kind of tedious. You don't notice you do things like that until you uh, are going back and you know editing your what you're recording, and it just sounds stupid. <laughs> so, thankfully, none of you guys have ever brought it up, which is very good of you, because I could see some people like throwing things at their monitor because of just some of the annoying crap that I have said in the past. What was a that's what I'm talking about. Um, so now I'm just doing final drilling everything to number 30, which is almost not necessary. This this is just going right through like butter. This is a super, super thin part. Very, very thin. There's not a lot of structure here. But again, it's weird how these really thin uh, pieces, I mean, this is, this is just skin that they've turned into a, a, a support, I don't wanna call it a rib, but you know, something that gives a little support. It's interesting just by bending it, how much how much more rigid this becomes. But it's just the same material as skin. Um, so and again, as I was talking about earlier, it's interesting how how stiff everything becomes once you assemble all these really flimsy parts into the final product. So let me drill these right quick. Okay. So with that, we've now got all of those holes drilled. Um, I need to now clean up these parts because they're a little rough. So I'm gonna go over to the bench grinder right quick, uh, which has my deburring wheels, get some of these little sharps off. And then I'm gonna go through and dimple everything. Onward. Now that we have done that, we got this cleaned up, it's time to do the dimpling of these top pieces. And so with that, I could either do that on the DRDT2 or I could use the uh, pneumatic squeezer, which is typically the way I go. So I'm going to turn this on right quick to get some air. My. Uh, Tank's got a little bit of a leak in it now suddenly. Usually it goes down as the pressure goes down, that particular leak goes away. I think the spring's getting stuck. It's cold out here so things behave a little poorly. I had to put some oil in here. Taking care of your tools is important. Now it seems to be working just fine, but one of those things you gotta, you gotta treat them right. Mm. Apple juice. Okay, so now we're gonna go through and dimple all of these. And just to make sure that looks good. Yep, that works. Oof. Hmm, how am I gonna do this? That. Okay, just have to go carefully. Okay. So I had some people ask me, when am I gonna start my law enforcement YouTube channel? <laughs> um, never? So there are, first of all, there are a number of really good law enforcement channels out there if you really want to get into it. Um, the three that come to mind immediately are Mike the Cop, I'll link these down below, Mike the Cop, Donut Operator, and Officer 401. Of the three, I think I like Officer 401 the best because he's very informative, like he'll explain the law, but also I have to be partial to him because you know he's in Georgia and he's actually about two hours away from me. Uh, so I, I, I don't know that I would want to get involved in that. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, first of all, there's a lot of hate for law enforcement officers right now. Um, a lot of that is due to people not being able to, uh, accept responsibility for their own actions, you know, but also there's the liability of the, the fact that you could say something in a, in a video that could then affect your employment. And I'm not really keen on that, you know? Uh, I actually kind of like my job, I'd like to keep it. Don't wanna screw that up, so I'd rather just shut the hell up, you know what I mean? Um, I'll leave it up to Mike and, 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 you know, Officer 401 and these other fellows that are doing this because I just think that, first of all, I think they're gonna do a better job uh, than I would, and that's, fine by me. So probably never. 
Uh, same thing with politics. Uh, I kind of at one time had this notion of starting up a, a, a politic channel where I could give my opinion and I've realized that, nah, <laughs> I just don't see the point. Uh, so I'll just continue making airplanes. I do like this. This is fun. There we go. So I went kind of slow on that because uh, just due to the nature of where this is, these, these uh, holes are a little deep into this flange. And so there's a possibility that this little lip right here on this could have caught you know, I've got a whole, could have caught like that. I don't know if you can see that well or not. I could have, I could have done that and pushed the button and it would have just totally mangled this part. So I was trying to go slow and make sure I didn't do that. Don't rush, don't rush on any of this. All right, so we final drilled the number 30. We did that. We've, uh, deeper and dimple for a flush rivet head on the upper side. Done. So step two is finished. Yeah. Now, let's see, Clico, the F23L baggage floor angle. That's this one, is this the, this is the L? Yeah. Uh, and the F10101A uh, and F10101 baggage door shims to the midside skim as shown in final drill number 30, all of the holes common between these parts except the holes marked in figure two do not drill. Okay. That's not the shims that I just did. This is a totally different set of shims. Alrighty. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go get that skin I probably need to finish taking the bluing off of it because I never did. You can see it's still got bluing on it. And it's interesting, it hasn't actually had me cut out the baggage door yet. So that's interesting. But I'm gonna go get that skin. I'm gonna put it on this table. I'm going to go find the F10101 <laughs> baggage door shims. It looks like there's two of them and make this happen tomorrow. <laughs> That's where I'm gonna end this one, guys. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so very much for sticking around. Uh, I know these videos sometimes are not very exciting. There's a lot of just reading the instructions over and over and over again to make sure you understand what the heck's going on. But this will go here. I may temporarily put the skin back on here because, you know, why wouldn't I? Uh, while I sort this, this out and yeah. We're gonna be drilling these holes. All right. Oh, uh, one thing I meant to tell you, uh, I actually work Christmas day, which sucks. So uh, my schedule next week, in fact, is insane. I'm actually being sent to a field sobriety test or, or, or class again, uh, as well as some more classes that I have to go to, which I'm totally cool by. They're gonna send me to all the classes. I'm glad to go, but it's kind of endless. So on that note, this may be the last video of the year. Wow. So if that's the case, um, I don't think we're making our timeline. <laughs> My original estimate was to be able to get this whole plane done by February uh, uh, 15th or whatever. I think February 15th, is that what I wrote? Uh, I'll have to look. 2020? And there is no way in hell. <laughs> That is gonna happen. Uh, so, oh well, uh, I'm still having fun. I'm gonna still continue to work on it um, for the rest of my life if I have to. Uh, that will make for really boring viewing for you guys, but sorry. Uh, I'm probably not gonna make my deadline, which is okay. Uh, I think as long as you accept that this is a long-term project, you can take as much time as you want. Uh, the good news is I'm slowly approaching the point where I can afford to get the next part of the kit. Uh, but I don't have to go there yet, so I'm just going to continue to accrue um, finances until uh, I get there. Still not sure how I'm going to do the engine. That's $48,000 if I go new. Um, probably won't go new because that's a lot of money, but we'll see. 
But anyways, guys, I want to thank you very much for sticking around. From my family to yours, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and all that. If I don't see you, if I do see you, I'll say it again, probably. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to get to it. Keep going, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.